So here we go. Welcome to another edition of the League One Lowdown. And once again, I'm joined by good old James Roberts, the man who covers all things Oxford United for the Oxford Mail. James, thanks for joining me. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, th thank you for having me on again. Um, yeah, great. To, doing great. Thank you. Can't believe the season's almost started again. But uh, yeah, as excited as ever to get into it. Indeed, yeah. 46 games to kick on with. Um, and of course, cup games and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's... I feel like the summer just went like that, and here we are already near the kick, did, did kick off the countdown. So I look forward to it. Um, well, Oxford United, um, well, last season, let's recap it then, James. Eighth in League One. Um, how would you look back at last season? Yeah, it's a weird one, really, because points wise, Oxford did better than the previous two seasons where they got in the playoffs. And to be honest, the whole season were, were in the top six, really, but it was kind of seen. It was a bit of a, a bittersweet end of the season because it all petered out, really. Ended up finishing seven points off the playoffs, you know, in a season where nine times out of ten, you would get in the top six. So, uh, I think that kind of skewed maybe the opinion of it. Um, Oxford last season were all about, uh, well, it was all entertainment, really. They scored, I think, the joint highest goals in the league with Wigan, got 80 plus or something like that, but then also conceded about 60 as well. So, there was a lot of four twos and three twos and things in there so it was always entertaining they just uh, needed to concede a few fewer goals to uh you know stay the course really but it was it was such a tough season you know competitively in league one I don't think we've seen anything like it and you never know it could be the same this year just need to unmute myself professional as ever Ross professional as ever um James well what's the current mood with Oxford United fans then missing out the playoffs last season Carl Robertson in charge um of course we're going to talk about the two key outs when we get to the transfer business but um what is the current mood involved with the support base at the moment um it's improved in the last week if you'd asked me a week ago I would have said it's uh it's not great because uh the start to the transfer window had been a bit slow um for Oxford but I think there's kind of I don't know. I think there's a, a difference. There's some fans who've kind of got the same sort of optimism that, you know, another top six challenge is, is you know, within reach. Others that kind of are thinking, oh, well, you know, this might be the season where we kind of fall a bit and, and consolidate and go again. Um, I think you kind of got to look at the, the rest of the league. Oxford, um, you know, like I said, improved points wise last season didn't improve position wise but um you know they're, they're kind of in a position where I think with the additions they've made and could make that you know there's, there's the chance to finish in the top six again and, and definitely to mount a challenge so I think there's a, a bit of uh maybe cautious optimism amongst the fan base compared to the sort of uh doom and gloom of a week ago when when those signings have been made Indeed. Um, well, let's jump right into the transfer business then. Uh, the elephant in the room with two players leaving, um, two big players. Of course, one of the players scored a late equaliser against us, which I'm sure a lot of town fans are still scarred with after the amazing scenes when we took the lead. Uh, Luke Manali has, um, the Irishman has gone to Burnley, um, linking up with Vincent Company, of course, there. And Mark Sykes has gone to, uh, no, is it Mark Sykes or Ross Sykes? No, it is, it is, it is Mark Sykes. Ross Sykes, the Acton, former Acton man. But um, he's gone to Bristol City, um, two key players. Um, that's disappointing to see, but sometimes you see when many clubs have lost big players who have been amazing in League One the last few years. Yeah, McNally's an interesting one. He went for sort of around two million in the end and, and actually to get that money for someone who played sort of 30 odd games for Oxford and literally hadn't even made his debut this time last year. It's pretty good. And considering what I said earlier about the sort of maybe lack of... Uh, ability to keep clean sheets in defence. You know, it's not like he was part of a, a, of a rock solid defence as good as he was individually. So, you know, he, he's a miss, but uh, Oxford, I'm sure we'll get onto this, but Oxford have signed uh, probably a, a better player now uh, in, in Stuart Finlay in his replacement, Scotland International. So you kind of think maybe the defence won't be hurt too much by that exit. And Sykes is a similar one as well. He was kind of, it was always quite clear as the season sort of got towards the end. Um, you know, he was he was out of contract uh, this summer and, and, you know, there was a lot of kind of stalling and I don't think he was kind of maybe necessarily going to sign for for Oxford if they stayed in League One, as it proved. And, uh, you know, he was someone who had his best season at Oxford, but probably won't be maybe as missed as, uh, you know, as, as some sort of opposition fans who maybe saw him play might think. So uh, those two have gone. There's also Ryan Williams, 
um, always sort of ever versatile player has gone back to Australia. Um, so it's kind of all all those players, you know, they're ones that will be missed. And and I think, you know, personality wise, they're all quite popular around the squad as well. But certainly not players that are replaceable. So um, you know, hopefully by the time we get to sort of September the first, um, you know, there'll be sort of upgrades in all those positions. Yeah, I'm sure as as I've said so many times in these videos. We've got a month for the window still to go when the first ball is kicked. So, yeah, a lot of deals could be happening. Um, let's talk about the, the injury. You've mentioned Stuart Finley as well. Um, as a whole so far, some decent players. One of the standouts is Janet Wilshots, who's recently signed recently. The Serdam International now, um, of course, has been having a bit of a tour. He went to Russia and I think he went to Israel or something like that, didn't he? Um, so um, what's been the reaction of those signings so far? Yeah, I, like I said, it's completely sort of changed the mood uh, amongst, you know, parts of the fan base. Finley is one that Oxford were first chasing sort of three years ago, you know, backed out of a deal. And, and actually this deal that, that was eventually completed last week was about three or four weeks in the making and that Oxford had a bid accepted that long ago. Um, you know, I think him, especially alongside Elliot Moore, who's a bit of a established League One defender, himself now you know should make a really sort of solid centre-back pairing providing they stay fit we've also got Kieran Brown whose loan last season from Cardiff has been made permanent um also on that left side of the fence so you know there's some sort of quite dependable players there as well um looking forward like you say Yannick Wildshut who uh I'm going to pronounce his wrong every name wrong every time I say it I'm sure but um yeah he's if you look at his experience and the player that he was in the championship you're thinking you know, blimey, this is this is someone that could really pull up trees for Oxford. And um I think I'm okay in saying this by the time this video goes out, but Oxford are about to agree a deal for Josh Murphy as well, former Norwich City winger, who's an unbelievable or could be, could be, providing he stays fit, an un unbelievable signing as well. So um yeah, there's suddenly a lot of positivity. It's been a, a slow burner this transfer window and Carl Rodinson has sort of publicly said that it's been sort of more sort of heavy going than than he'd hoped but um but yeah it's things are start, starting to come together there's still positions that you know do need work but i mean if you look at the the squad even now compared to what it was a week ago you know i think Oxford fans will be going to derby on saturday a lot more confident than they would have been yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, well, let's get your thoughts on the season ahead then, James. You're going to be going home and away covering the football club. Um, what do you reckon then? Um, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be a big season. As you said, you're going to go to Derby this weekend and have a big club dropping down to League One. We've got Barnsley as well. Peterborough coming back down. Loads of different clubs. Sheffield Wednesday looking strong. What do you reckon then for this season for Oxford? I mean, it's so tough, isn't it? Like, you know, if you'd said at this time last year, Oxford are going to finish on 76 points, you'd have said they're finishing in the top six, no question about it. But um, obviously it didn't prove that way. I still think, personally, I still think Oxford are a little bit off um, maybe being a top six, not a, not a top six challenger. I think they're, they're, they're already in a position where they can challenge the top six. I don't think right now they're in a position where you'd put them as one of your, your maybe your bets for that. For that sort of position um again like you said it the next month is so crucial you'd like to think Oxford will hang on to the players that they've got in the building it is quite a strong sort of squad in terms of quality maybe not so much in terms of depth there but um you know if they can keep on to those players and I think sign a couple of key positions maybe another defensive midfielder another left back you know there's no reason why they can't mount a, a full challenge for the top six we just don't know how good everyone else is going to be. You know, Derby a month ago looked like they'd really struggled and now suddenly they've got a signing sort of ex-Premier League players. So, uh, yeah, it it will be an interesting one, won't it? But, um, yeah, as it stands, I'd, I'd certainly back Oxford to finish top half again and, and, you know, at least be in that conversation for the playoffs. I think so too. And, uh, well, let's go and talk about head-to-heads between Town and Oxford as we've looked back before recording. It's been very boring goalless draws. Um, of course, one win for Oxford back in 2020. Then, of course, actually, to be fair, the game in March last season, 1-1 one -one draw, we scored a good goal. And then you scored a late equaliser. So at least we had a bit of uh, drama in that game for once. Um, but we don't play each other until Boxing Day, um, day after Christmas. You know, all of us recovering from eating loads of turkey and all of our Christmas chocolate. Um, so that's going to be a very 
good game. I always like a home game for me anyway at Portman Road on Boxing Day. But it's not a bad trip for Oxford going to Portman Road. That will be a big game going to that one. And then it's a, a quick turnaround when we play Oxford again. It's uh, 21st of January at the Kassam Stadium. Um, what's your thoughts on the two games? They're always big games in terms of Oxford United, Itchwich Town. It's always been interesting ones to talk about. Carl Robertson versus Kieran McKenna. What do you think? Yeah, it'll be. I think it'll be cracking Christmas cracker is the cliche, isn't it, on Boxing Day? Um, but um, I think it'll be extra interesting because wasn't it last season the um, sort of whole boring, boring Oxford uh, chance came out and there was a, a bit of a uh, bit of needle between maybe the two fan bases afterwards. So um, yeah, I, it'll be fantastic in Ipswich as they were last summer. Obviously, it didn't quite turn out that way, but it seems to be one of the clubs, you know, making doing some of the best business at the moment so um yeah i think you know i think by nature this might sound like a defeatist attitude maybe but if you're an oxford united fan going to portman road for a probably a sellout crowd you, you'd probably be happy with a draw that might change depending on obviously where the teams are in the positions but in the table by then um and then the home game you know you often get it don't you when teams play each other that quick that quickly um it can be quite tight, which is uh, probably not good news because we know how tight it is anyway. So, um, yeah, I, it, you know, they're always good games. Personally, I, I love Portman Road, one of my favourite grounds to go to because I'm a, I'm a real sucker of sort of historic grounds. And, uh, yeah, I, it'll be a fantastic occasion and, and hopefully both clubs will be sort of in those promotion positions. So it will just add to the occasion. Indeed, bring it on a big sick point as they will be indeed. Uh, James, it's been a pleasure always. Always good to catch you up. Um, any other business? Anything else you want to mention, my friend? Cool. Only that uh, don't listen to any of my predictions at the table because, uh, you know, I've seen all sorts. I've seen Oxford, um, Oxford uh, predicted 16th, seen Oxford predicted 8th. Anyone's guess. So if, if anyone gets all 24 right, then uh, they are. <laughs> well, they're lying. Yeah. Give me, the, give me the lottery numbers right now. Give me give me them, definitely. Oh, well, James, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching another edition of the League One Lowdown. The countdown is on. Let's get into it. Bye-bye for now.